Yeah, I've created the curves here. I'll just show you. I've got the left, left curves and the back curves, the right one, the top and the side burns here. So this curves has been created by using the paint effects method. But the point is this particular curve doesn't have the point touching the surface here. So I need to fix that and create the hair. Firstly, I want to create the hair for this model. And uh, when you want to create the hair, you need to check the UV soft. Now you see the UVs has been laid out in the shell, just a little bit slightly scale in, uh, not to touch the boundaries and uh, these are in the 0, 1 time. Okay, that's the first thing I want to do here. And this model uh, need to be checked for the transformations. So first I'll just choose freeze transformation here and uh, make sure that it is a neat mesh. You, you, you should need to do all the cleanup what you generally do to conclude your model after modeling stage. So I just want to do the uh, hair for this particular model. So I'll just set this to X gen here and then uh, we got the X gen. Mm, I'm not using the X gen interactive grooming, I'm using X gen. So here I've got create new description and this is where I would start this. So you need to select the model and then go to create new description there. And here uh, I'm going to name this as uh, male uh, here. So and here uh, people generally do the hair uh, separately. I mean the sides they do separate, the top they do separate. You can use this method. Um, or you can put all the curves in one and then do anything should be okay so I'm showing if what if if I do the top side back parts of the hair separately so here I'm going to name this as a uh, top uh, hair in the description so this is uh, the splines um, and then I'm going to use the random across the surface and Placing and shaping guides is the method how I just want the primitives to be so keeping this settings I'll just create the hair Make sure that you are associated with the project because all your um, Files will go to that particular project. So I'll just keep uh, my all other layers high so uh, I've got the sideburns right and everything so I've got these curves here. I've got a lot of curves. Now these curves has to be, um, if you see the pivot point of any particular curve is in the center. Uh, I just, uh, if I want them to be at the starting point, I've got a command. I'll open the script editor and I've already loaded that command here. So you should, you should see this particular script. So I select all the curves and then execute this. So after executing, you should see the pivot point will be at the starting point of the curve. There. So that's one thing I have done. I have rebuilt at that curve or you can try once again. Just go to the rebuild and then here I'm entering two spans. I just want to keep this too low. If you want extra detail, you can go for the highest subdivision also. So I'm keeping this to two and then rebuild. So that's one thing. Now the, the point is I just want these points to be um, at the, it should touch the surface. So I select all the, uh, first I select the model. Let's assign a basic uh, material. So I use a very uh, basic Lambert shader here. So in the Lambert shader, I just uh, name this as gray shader, just give it like that. And what I do is I select the first uh, uh, control vertex for that, first select all the curves and then go to the select menu and choose first CV. 
So I've selected all the first CV and I can move them and uh, I can make them snap to the surface. But before that, you need to select your model and then make it uh, live. Okay, so that became the live and then select all the um, curves and then go to select and choose first CV and just uh, move it. And you should see all the points will uh, snap to the point where, where you really want. You can use the scale tool also to scale them. And once that is done, just see how these curves are basically snapped. For example, this one has got a very weird uh, placement. Um, so try to clean it up. Before cleaning it up, select all the curves and then do the rebuild again. Uh, so that from that starting point the rebuild happens and it will try to simplify the curve and uh, I'll just uh, use the command again so that the pivot point goes to the first uh, CV and then maybe I can scale it if I want it delete that curve not really needed okay so I've got all the curves nicely placed here uh, let's see how I progress later but I've got a decent curves here I can manually select a point and then move it if uh, This is weird. Yeah, now it can. It's too sensitive. Yeah. So you can do that way. Now what I will do is I just select the XGen interface and I just switch uh, to this tabs here. And here I've got a utility section. You select any utility and you get the attributes of that utility here. So I'll use um, one of the utility here, curves to guides. Then I select all of them, all the curves here. Okay, first I need to switch off the make light. Select all the curves and then click here and tell that these curves will become the guides. And uh, you got the guides here as uh, you want and then if you click the uh, button here which will show up the here on the model and uh, you can anytime switch off the display of the uh, guides if uh, and you can control them I can go to the primitive section and increase the density and then add a lot of uh, guides there so I'll keep the uh, density to 10 and I just want to keep the hair thin, not uh, thicker because uh, sorry, I want to keep the hair thick because I just want that viewport visibility thing correctly. Uh, when I do the render, I'll just change the uh, density and width as per the render output. Right now, I'll just keep it with that method. And uh, maybe I can use this option called taper, which will allow me to uh, taper the hair. Uh, and the taper will happen from the starting point to the end point, which I can really uh, make the taper to happen only on the end, end of it. And if I go off screen and then do the refresh, I only see the hair, which is uh, maybe visible to the camera. So. You don't see that thing so uh, you should be aware of that point here and uh, you can use these guides and uh, edit them before going into that uh, this is uh, okay this is for visibility this is for making the hair uh, invisible so what I do here is I just go to the density mask section and uh, I'm going to click here and then choose create map and I'm going to choose the resolution to um, 15 
and then make everything to black so what it will do is uh, the map resolution in the poly painting it will take 15 and the higher the number the more the quality of the map you get and you got a uh, black color as your starting and you can keep uh, any name for the map if for the sake of uh, convenience and i'm putting this as top mask and then create it and uh, you see everything turned to black and then i can switch off the visibility and uh, open the tool settings and then choose the hard brush hard brush is recommended and then uh, just go to this particular um, color and then choose white there. and then increase the brush and start painting the strokes uh, and this is uh, a, a value map i can say which is controlling the density where the color is painted to white so you don't get the hair outside the um, color like that once i have done that i just click this save button and i get the hair only where i am expecting here i can switch off the display and i got the hair if you just get into the shelf of the extension you will find a tool uh, which will allow me to sculpt the guides choose that and just uh, increase the brush size and when you hover the uh, mm, cursor on the guides here uh, you get something influenced in the red color and that is the part of the guide which will, uh, will be sculpted over so you can um, try to um, enhance the overall style of the hair after you have got this um, thing so you're guiding you're sculpting it nicely and that's how i create the top part of the hair i just want to create the next part which is the side part of the hair uh, for that again i use a tool here for select a model click this button and uh, i'm using the male hair and this time i'm choosing uh, left side okay left side and then i'm using splines in what kind of primitives you want i'm using generate randomly across and for this i'm using the guides so i'll create the second one and you should see when you are working on top you need to choose a top when you're working on the side you need to choose a side because you get accordingly i mean you do anything that will affect only to the side there So I've got the hair created here. If you see, I've created uh, the collection which was basic head male hair, and it has got different uh, uh, descriptions in it. So I'll just go here and then clear all collections, clear all collections, and preview current description only. I'll just switch it on, and then choose the back hair. Make sure that you can preview it properly then the uh, side here and then right here then you got the top here so if I go preview all collections I, I'll see all the hairs here now you got the guides here uh, you you go to the top here back here right here left here 
so you got all the guides here you need to select the guides and then start uh, adjusting them or sculpt them with uh, either using this sculpt technique you need to just select that and then in which particular description you are you can do the sculpting of that guides so you can um, try to modify as per your requirement and also you can select an individual guide there you can select an individual guide right click and then go to the guide control points and then you'll have vertex point like points which you can select and move and then you can move them like that and then when you uh, refresh you are affecting that part of the so it influences a, a group of uh, hair so you can create the hair that way so it is like object mode and component mode of the guide you can do that you can select the guide point and then choose the soft selection and then just move it that side and then refresh it so that's how i create the basic here